Slurp me dad, my G's. I hope you're all doing wonderful. Let's break down one of my vital presets today called the Age of Espeon. First, a couple of shout outs. Big ups to Blips. Uh, big ups to Cobra. Uh, Jack Kozolski. Uh, Mike Briggs, as always. Madaza Music, thank you. And NZ Audio, big ups to you guys. And it's great to be back making some YouTube videos at the moment. I'm feeling the spirit. And uh, thank you for everyone who grabs the latest preset pack. Vital Vengeance, I really enjoyed creating this one and I wanted to deconstruct one of the patches. Some of my personal favorite sounds in this in this pack are the ARPs and ARPs are really fun and easy to make in Vital. And this is one of them uh, that I really like because it has a nice, uh, just a nice tonality to it. I call it the Age of Espeon. It sounds like this on its own. <laughs> So a nice bit of tension on and some, uh, yeah, cool, uh, quite simple movement, but nice uh, tonality in the patch as well. And very, very simple to make. Uh, the, the whole concept really is obviously having a nice, a nice pitch, like kind of selection for the ARP notes. And the rest of the sound is really made from a combination of uh, like sine wave and saw wave with a good amount of distortion and filtering and just a couple of other parameters to give the whole patch a little bit more like s smoothness and realism. And so everything is done uh, on the first LFO to create the main movement. We have two LFOs. The f LFO one is just doing the, the actual rhythm and an LFO two is controlling the, uh, the notes of the ARP, okay? So really, really simple with LFO one. What I've done is I've, I've I've, essentially it's like a ramp down but I've given it like a bit of an attack so it's a bit softer at the start so if you, you know, if it made it longer it's kind of like you just take the sin or the sign uh, preset and then you can just move the top part over to the left so it's almost like a stabbing motion but just with a bit of smoothness at the beginning essentially and so what, uh, so what sounds we're going to basically modulate are firstly a uh, sine wave. So to do the, the actual rhythm of the ARP, we first have to bring their level of the oscillators all down to zero and then track the level of them uh, onto the uh, LFO to start the movement. So with, with the sine wave at minus 24 and no settings on the unison, you know, that's the first part of the synth. That's where it all begins, okay? Then we can add in a second one here. And this time we're gonna do a, a saw wave, just the basic shapes one. Same again from zero, and I'm going just zero to 100 with the amount. But this one's at minus 12, so an octave higher. And just a slight bit of detuning, minus five, very, very small amount, uh, but also a unison on this one. So three voices and 17, uh, just to provide a little bit of um, width and it kind of choruses the, the, you know, the wavetable a little bit. Okay, so that's the first part. Uh, that's the main sort of beef of the oscillator section. I added in a third one here, um, which is just providing a bit of extra padding in the high end. And this is up at plus 12. And this is really, really unison. Uh, like a lot, like 16 voices and 17. And you don't hear it so much, it's kind of like just a few extra harmonics. Um, when there's like distortion added, you'll hear it a bit more. But that's that's the setup, so that you can copy along with if you like. And then the next thing we need to do, uh, well firstly we'll add a bit of uh, life into these saw waves, because saw waves on their own, they're quite harsh and a bit horrible. Uh, one thing that you can do that I like is, is the vocode setting. It just gives it a little bit of smoothness. And so I've put the vocode on both and I've modulated um, one going from zero up to 100, again on the LFO, so just dragging the LFO on there. And one going from, uh, this one going from 100 to zero. And if you listen to the difference, quite subtle but the the high end is just like slightly slightly smoother okay a little bit of a subtle tweak there uh, but next we've got to do the main uh, important part to actually get the ARP going yeah so we can do that now 
so we're using LFO2 as the ARP. And all we, all we do is we have to drag the LFO onto the, the, uh, the, the tuning of the oscillators, so of oscillator 1, uh, and then you can right click, enter value, and hit 12, so it's going to be 12 semitones, because that's obviously one octave, in case you didn't know. Uh, so it's going to go up exactly from one octave higher, you know, and that's going to be the range then from zero to one octave. And the same on the second one as well, also putting a, uh, the LFO2 on the second one. And I've left it off the third one because the third one is just kind of like uh, always staying in the same note in the background. So it also adds a little bit of like extra detail because one of them is like static and the other ones are pitching. But this one is in the background anyway, so it's quite, uh, it's, it, you don't hear it too much anyway. Okay, and then with the actual LFO2, um, so setting up the ARP grid, simple. You just go to up here, you can set up your grid nice and easily. Put the first number on 16, so it, the whole grid is, you know, going to, <laughs> you know, 16, well, it's not 16 bars, but, you know, that's the that's the uh, denomination that you need uh, for, for music <laughs> in 4-4. And uh, then you can set this second one to 12, and this is going to be then the 12 semitones of the octave. And then you can click here and go to the step mode and paint, and then you can, it simply snaps to the grid wonderfully. So you can just draw in the notes that you want for the ARP. So I could change it up a bit if I wanted, just for fun, you know. So obviously you want to try and pick those notes that add uh, to the vibe that you're going for. So, you know, using notes that provide a bit of tension as well, like a little semitone up here as well. And then other notes that will like stick to your minor scale or whatever you're going for. Um, just use your ears and have fun. You don't have to get religious about, you know, like keeping it exactly in key always. Uh, in drum and bass, it's best to, to just like go with the vibe and, and break the rules a little bit. But you, you can tell if there's one like really wrong note, you know. I mean, that kind of works. Like that one there. I, I don't really like that one so much. But anyway, you, you, there's no rules rules with music, of course. But just have fun and create a cool art pattern like that. And then we've got loads more work to make the sound of it actually more interesting. So we're going to firstly do some filtering down here. Uh, and the phaser positive filter, firstly, is going to provide a bit of like expression in the mid-range okay so we're going to run both of the first two oscillators which is the only main ones really into this filter drive it up a bit and then we're going to modulate uh, the mix on the lfo so it's going to come on and off and it's also going to move the cutoff position very very slightly and that obviously makes quite an impact starts to shape the sound give it a bit more of a neurofunk edge as well and now what we're going to do is we've because we're still because we've used saw waves it's always a good idea to low pass them just because the real high end of the saw waves is just always like really horrible for the ear so after this filter we're going to run it through another one so clicking filter one here so it roots into this one and we're going to add a low pass here uh, so that's just going to make the whole sound even more dynamic as well. Okay, so we're really like taking out a lot of the highs, but they're, they're coming in a little bit on the LFO1 pattern. Again, everything is modulated on the LFO1. And although we've, we've low-passed a fair amount, there's still uh, those little high-end frequencies that you can still hear, like a bit of high-end content. And that's going to get massively exaggerated now as we add in all the effects, particularly the distortion, which is the main hero of the story. And the soft clipping is always wonderful, and I've driven it up quite a lot. 13 dB, to be precise, or 13.12. <laughs> So solidifying everything that we've already done and really pushing it up. And when I'm creating sounds from scratch, uh, I'll often have the distortion on early on and then work backwards because sometimes it makes such a drastic difference. It's great to, to have the distortion uh, ready and going as you're, 
as you're designing the the first part of the synth so you can also do that as well so you, either way around you, you know because you have to be aware that uh, a lot of the greatest sounds that you get will come from the result of big amounts of distortion so it's often useful to have a big amount of distortion already turned on before you start you know tweaking everything else so that's that's sometimes the way i work <laughs> And then the chorus is, is just great in Vital. Um, it just sounds good. And obviously we're making a bass up and we want to make it stereo. It's not, you know, we have this like misconception in a lot of like random YouTube videos that are just spreading false information that your bass should be in mono, which is a horrible thing to say because as we know, uh, the, the low end, the, the sub, for example, 100 Hertz and below should be in mono, you know, but the rest of the whole bass uh, you know, to be it to be enjoyed needs to be in stereo. So we can chorus the whole thing here and make it a lot more juicy and wide and lovely. So this is where it really comes into its own. Uh, it's always for me the combination of the distortion and the chorus in the vital effects section that really brings the sound to life. So uh, it's always good to tweak the settings a bit here. And uh, you don't want to mix it too much and lose all of your mono power. So I like about 20 or 30% on the mix usually. You can tweak the delay settings to, to like change the shape of the chorus a bit. Uh, and then we can add a bit of high end reverb. So taking out a bit of the low end and just mixing in a little bit of reverb here. And then we'll do another filter. The first one we used was a positive one, which sort of leaves the high end in and just really does an obvious sort of little mid-range kind of cut and boost shape here. And the negative one is sort of the other way around. It sort of has little two little uh, bumps and then it takes out a bit of the high end. And I didn't want to take out all of the high end as it, as it does here. It really shaves off quite a lot. So I've just used it uh, a little bit in the mix and then modulated the mix amount. And again, moving the cutoff amount very, very slightly. And I'm just honing in on the mid-range expression of the ARP because obviously the mid-range is the key characteristic of the sound. That's where the main movement centers around. And by uh, shaping things around there in the mid-range, uh, that's where I can like further refine the actual expression of the sound. So that's just all I'm doing here. And then I believe we just have a little bit of uh, the compressor and and a tiny bit of delay. And look, the compressor, uh, it doesn't really work like a normal compressor. I've mentioned this in previous Vital videos. Uh, imagine the OTT plugin or something like that, the multiband compressor here. It sort of um, just slams the sound and saturates it in a kind of uh, overly aggressive way. And you can shape how it does that with the attack and the release a little bit and then mix it in a little bit. Uh, often if you mix it in too high, it's just kind of destroying the sound quite quickly. You know, but if you can find a little balance. It's almost like a parallel saturation signal. That's how I kind of view that. Uh, and then a little delay with the ping pong, 16 on each side, a little fast delay. Uh, just in the mix again a really small amount six percent just so you've got a little tail at the end so there's a little tail of delay and a little uh, reverb tail as well just to help uh, put the sound into a space and that is the age of SB on ARP then <laughs> And when I go ahead and create my preset packs as well, I always um, take the time to make some extra macros just so you can like mess around with the with the patch a bit. And for example, the wash is what, what I always do to, you know, increase reverb and delay and, and that kind of thing. Then uh, the slow is sort of to slow it down. So just changing the speed of the LFO, pretty straightforward. And then Tony, I like to make, it's almost like a version A and a version B of the actual tonality of the sound. And th things that you can do to, to change the tonality of the sound. So uh, imagine you were writing a, uh, a track using this ARP and you were using it quite a lot. 
and you felt like you needed to give it more variation, you can use two separate versions and sort of play between them in a call and response kind of fashion. And that's why I use things like uh, a tonality control. And the, how I change the tone is very simple. Um, often it's sort of just messing with the filters and the distortion really, because that, that, that's what's creating the character. So I'll often put the, the tonality control on the cutoff position of the of the exact um, yeah f filter movement so the the, fil the movement will be in a slightly different frequency area the example this one is goes slightly lower and um, yeah again I think the same control is on this uh, second filter so by combining the filter positions and changing also the the amount of drive on the distortion I can create like a diff uh, almost a range of different harmonics that you can use <laughs> And you can find just your favorite bat blend between the two variations. Like for, I liked it sort of around here. But it's great because you can sometimes get some extra life and power uh, with the slightly different filter settings if you like just subtly morph between them and find the best balance. So that's the Age of Espeon Arp. Hope you enjoyed that uh, video. And uh, thank you for watching. Much love, my Gs. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you do. If you like the video, check the little like button. Appreciate that as well. Thanks to everyone who's grabbed the preset pack. It's still on sale today and tomorrow. Uh, it ends tomorrow night at 9 p.m. And then it'll go back to normal retail price. Um, thank you for everyone who's been booking in some lessons recently as well. One-on-one uh, -on -one mentorship sessions are a great way to level up your sound at high speed. Uh, links for that are always on my website. And yeah, thanks for watching my G's. Have a great day. Peace out. Much love.